G'day, fellas, and welcome to game number two of your grand finals for the Outback Octagon. Sporting in on the north side of the map. Playing as the blue Delhi, we've got State. Just below him, playing as the pink Chinese, we've got Zertan. Slightly below him, a little further along, we've got Don Artie in the purple, playing as the Rus. Towards the east of the map, playing in the color green, it's Symptom on the deli. Towards his west, he's got two players very close by. It is Dinky King, it is Wham. Wham plays as the Rus in the red, Dinky King as the English in the teal. In the middle of the map, playing as the Holy Roman Empire, we've got Puppy Boar. And finally, towards the north, playing as the French, we've got Matiz. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your second game in this series. In this series, we have got, uh, we've got quite a lot of things that have been happening, a whole bunch of points that have come through. I'm just going to make sure that that chat is, uh, is actively updating. There we go. Uh, hopefully that, up that updates a little bit more for you guys. It wasn't updating before. It can be a little bit weird. Sometimes it freezes. Uh, so we can see Zerton had one minute TC ago. Well, had a TC one minute ago. And that's exactly it. This is the power of China. You've got to be really careful of China uh, when it comes to these games. Uh, I'm, I'm still looking at that chat and making sure that chat... Why is that chat not moving? This is frustrating me. Don, Artie, what have you done to me? Hold on, guys. Sorry. All right. All right, so apparently we've already got a, a non-aggression pact that is built. Uh, so it is Wham and Dinky are non-aggressive at this point in the game. Um, so that is going to be a, uh, a pretty big factor here. Uh, so these guys are going to be working, not working together. Keep that in mind. They're not working together, non-aggression. It just means they're not going to be attacking each other until that 30-minute mark. Uh, so that, that is what we allow it to be. Uh, now, there is no downside to having a non-aggression pact. It is not an alliance. The difference between an alliance and a non-aggression pact is that in an alliance, you're actively working with that person. You're defending them if they're being attacked. You're attacking with them. You're working with them. A non-aggression pact, it's just basically like, hey, you look the other way, I'll look the other way, and we'll be good. All right, so there you guys go. That's the rules. That's how it's working. And now the question comes, who who is going to be in the best position to win here? We'll take a look from Matiz's perspective, get an idea on where those trading posts are. We can see that there are two in the middle of the map, and one of them is quite close to Matiz as well. So he's going to be very happy with that. I wouldn't be surprised if we actually look to see him put a Chamber of Commerce right here and begin trading down towards this. Trading post is... Oh, Don, Don's stream freezing right now. Apologies, guys. Uh, so uh, Don just froze on, on the stream. Uh, but uh, we should be a little bit, uh, a little bit behind... Uh, where they are. Hold on. You know, you know what? We might just move it forward a little bit. Actually, I can't. Never mind. I can't fast forward. Actually, I can pause though. Sorry, guys. We're just going to pause it just so we sync up with Don. Give me a sec. Apologies. I know you guys. All right. There we go. All right. So now we're synced. Chat will be synced at the exact same time. The same time you see the chat messages on your screen will be exactly when they're coming through. But there, I guess the question is, who's in the best position to win here? Because when it comes to winning, you're not necessarily taking the most points out of the game. You know, ideally, you're looking to kill people. And Zerton is in a great spot here. Now, this is something that we've seen him do very well before from the pocket. Is what he can do is, as the Chinese especially, you, get, you are rushing ahead of everybody else. We take a look at, at Zerton right now. Okay, let's do a little bit of a comparison. If we take a look at Zerton, what's he got? He's got eight villagers three fishing boats and a, or nine villages and three fishing boats and a scout okay let's compare that to his neighbor uh so don Artie. if we look at don Artie, what's don Artie got well don's got nine villages as well he's got the scout but one of the key differences here is that he doesn't have those fishing boats and part of the reason here is that zerton is up much faster he gets those resources a lot quicker because he gets that town center up he gets it established his villages start chopping sooner he starts making villages sooner so he is just naturally ahead of his neighbors and that gives him a really strong point because now all of a sudden he can be like well you know what i i, I can ask someone for an, a non-aggression uh i can say hey you know uh hey state do you want to do a non-aggression pact yeah let's do it okay and now he goes over here and kills donati and then he can even look to break that non-aggression pact as well uh so 
that that is one of the possibilities but i'm looking forward to seeing how zerton plays it because i suspect the ball is going to be in his court at this early stage of the game and remember that there's a whole bunch of new rules that have come in now if you missed what the new rules are i explained it in the last video i can go over a couple of them the big one is going to be bloodbath uh, oh sorry not bloodbath uh first blood now not only is there first blood there's also second and third blood uh, that we have introduced which means that you get 10 points for the very first kill in the game 10 points gonna be going your way uh if you get that first kill in addition to the points for the kill and if you get the second kill or the third kill you get an extra five points so there's a big incentive here for you to get out on the map and get aggressive even though in the last game, Don Ardy was victorious. He won the game with the Sacred Sight victory. Even though he did that, he wasn't the leading point scorer. You want to know who the leading point scorer was at the end of the game? It was Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw was the leading point scorer at the end of the game because he got that first blood. He got knocked out immediately. Now, there weren't a lot of kills in that game. And as a result, the points that were given out were a lot lower. Uh, but uh, you can see that we've already got a bit of, uh, a, bit of uh, uh, a little bit of a chat between these guys. Talking about, you know, what they're interested in, what they're not interested. Dumb of the Faith going to be coming down. Um, but <laughs> I'm just reading the chat between these guys. Uh, let's take a look exactly what we've got going on. Because as you would suspect, it is going to be early aggression coming out from Zerton. It's going to be a Barbican. A base in the face. And once again, State going to be the target of this early aggression. We saw him in the last game go out very, very early. Puppy Paw already reaching the feudal age? Damn, Puppy Paw, how you fit in them jeans. That is an early age up for Puppy Paw. He's ahead of the game right now, getting that town center down, getting that age up through. And I suspect he's going to be looking for that age three. We can see he's actually on stone. Uh, so might be thinking about potentially getting up a, uh, yeah, going to be dropping down an outpost. Very smart little outpost as well. Brings in the boar. Look at that. Boar going to be coming down. Barbican does get up. Do not worry, friends. That that uh, that Barbican is going to be getting up and village is going to be going down with it. Looks like that, that last one does manage to get in the town center, I think. Yeah, it does indeed. So, Don Artie also going to be uh, be getting attacked. He's got the Golden Gate down here. So the question is, where does he go from here? What does he look to do? Does he look to do a bit of a, a backstab on Zerton, potentially? That could always be an option. Uh, but State stuck up here towards the north of the map. Now, one of the things that State can do, you can see it. You can say, Zerton barb rush me. He's, he's communicating that. So now Don might think, okay, well, State's being barbican rushed by Zerton. I can focus on killing Zerton. That doesn't necessarily mean these guys are teamed up. But if, if Don then says, hey, do you want to team up? Or, or if State says, hey, can you come and help me? Do you want to team up? Then that's that's that, that's an alliance. That's a little bit different. Villager going down once again uh, over here. State now going to be reaching the Feudal Age. He is up. He's safe in the Feudal Age. He's made his way up here. No real access to gold. He's got another one up towards the north. So he's going to be dropping down that outpost. Bit of a villager race, I suspect, as these villagers move forward. We can see the outpost going to be coming up for Zerton as well. Three villagers up against the four for the Chinese. Uh, I would probably favor the outpost for state, but I still think this outpost gets up. And if that does get up, then it favors uh, the uh, the Chinese player. All right. Well, Zerton looking good at this point in the game. Still everybody reaching those second ages. Everybody up at the moment, except for Matiz and Dinky King. Looks like that outpost does get up. And with that outpost getting up, it guarantees that this gold mine is going to be under threat here. Zerton going to be looking to secure that. Now moving forward, another outpost going to be coming up. It's going to be a bit of an outpost race. And you can see the early aggression state in a little bit of a struggle town. He instead turns his villagers towards the villagers that are building up that outpost and gets his shivs out. These guys are going to be dishing out six damage a pop. Unfortunately, it looks like this outpost might go up. A couple of villagers will go down in the fray. One of them might actually be able to get inside. Indeed, he gets inside and four villagers get in there. State in a bit of a bit of trouble here. This is not good for him. He was one of the first players. In fact, the first player taken out in the first game. It could be the second one that he also gets taken out first as well. He's dropping down the barracks and archery range on the backside here. Ideally, not what he wants. Playing as the Delhi in this game. You've already been drawn the short straw uh, when it comes to playing the Delhi. And now you've got a Barbican in your face. Things are just going from bad to worse for him. East side of the map. Simtom begins the Great Wall of Simtom. Slowly but steadily building it up. Keep in mind he's playing the Delhi as well. And Don Hardy's going to be looking to go for an H3. Beautiful little high trade house he's got back here. It looks good, but I, I don't know. It looks good, but I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to guess this is like 12. 12 gold. Nah, not really. It, I'm, I'm going to go with like 96 or something. It looks good, but it's not actually that good. It's kind of like orange juice. It looks good for you. It's not really. But uh, high trade house is going to be a smart move there from Don We'll head towards the middle of the map, and you can see down towards this south side, Puppy Paw has got a little bit of an expansion down here. No one really yet to move in this area. But Puppy Paw now going to be dropping down that Burgrave Palace. Puppy Paw looking to claim out an early 
kill here as well. Now, keep in mind, State going to be trying to s keep himself alive in this game for as long as possible. The longer he keeps himself alive, the more points he's going to be awarded from placement. So if Puppy Paw looks to roll through two or three people, then there's the chance that, that State could be, you know, in a really, really decent spot. Um, well, not really, but <laughs> it, it, there's a chance that he, he could get a little bit more points and that might help him out. Another outpost coming in. Don Artie reaching age three. And we've got behind this, we've got the Imperial Academy from Zertan actually getting placed. He originally placed it in his base, but decides he's going to place it nice and over towards this position. Let's check in with the, the high trade house for Don Hardy. 231. Damn, I'm impressed. That's a pretty good high trade house. Not a terrible one at all. And now the unit's going to be coming out. State going to be looking to hold on here. Down on that south side, though, we do see the Burgrave Palace going to be coming up. Remember, there's a non-aggression pact between Dinky and between Wham. So it doesn't mean that Wham is going to be defending Dinky. It just means that he's not going to be attacking him. Matt is saying, wait, state is Delhi, not China, lol. And you can see a little bit of confusion in the chat. Their players not sure who is who uh, and not realizing what civs are, are what. But now the Chukunu are going to be coming out. Zertan definitely looking really strong in this game, but definitely also leaving his back door open. So I wouldn't be surprised if Don goes and I guess he's buying himself time though, isn't he? He's got the monastery out. He's looking to clean things up. Chokunu going to get forced back here. Villager's going to be running back towards that outpost. A lot of units here. So it looks like state might be able to keep himself alive a little bit longer. Also got the, the scholars on the backside, but now that age three has come through. Man at arms are upgraded. Puppy Paw starting to look serious. There's a second town center out for Dinky King, but he may not have realized exactly how close Puppy Paw was to him. We're right on board with him, and you can see he has scouted this area out. I don't know exactly how much he knew, but uh, unfortunately, the man at arms is going to begin rolling in. And I suspect Dinky King might be in a little bit of trouble. Now, the question is whether he is in a position to get down that next landmark. You can see he's got plenty of resources in the bank, but unfortunately still not enough to drop that next landmark. So in the event his enemy looks to take out these two landmarks, it's going to be a big problem. You can see he's under attack now, getting idle. Going to be chopping through on this other side as well. Might be able to find himself a, a way through up towards the north. Could look to start a whole new empire up there somewhere. But uh, back over towards that northern battle that is brewing. And we can see that State's done a great job of cleaning up Zerden at this early stage of the game. Great job by State. You know, getting attacked, Barbican in the face, managing to keep himself cool, calm, and collected. A lot of people would have just been angry that, you know, I'm spawned next to China, and they've overwhelmed me with their numbers. But now things not looking the best for Zerden. He's, he's aggressive. He's put down the Barbican. But unfortunately, he might be getting kicked back here. On that south side, though, the men at arms going to start begin sieging down that town center. You can see he's focusing down both of them. Dinky King still yet to be able to drop down that, that next landmark. We'll have a look and see where his villagers are at. He's got a couple that are out here. He did move more up towards the north. You can see them, all 15 of them up here. He's going to be trying to catch that bad boy in as well. Villagers actually out on the farms. He's trying to get more resources in, and you can see the hand in. He hands in six. He needs one more food. One more food to get up, and that's going to be guaranteeing that he stays alive for a little bit longer. Towards that north side, and Reserton might be in trouble right now. Oh my lord, just when you thought the tides had turned, the tides turned even stronger. Look at this. State just taking over this northern position. And Zerton might be in a bit of trouble. Behind this, he's got the blacksmith coming up. He's returned with plenty of, uh, of uh, buildings in the base. But I'm worried for him. I'm really worried for him. Age 3 now coming through for Dinky. Looking to play it a little bit safer. He's going to be dropping down the King's Palace on this shoreline. Towards that shoreline, though, there is only one player who is on the water. It is going to be Matiz. Keep in mind that Matiz is playing on the French and will have access to that super duper good trade in the late game. Town center continuing to get siege down. And with Dinky King reaching the third age, it's highly likely uh, that Puppy Poor is going to know, all right, well, this isn't going to be everything, but we're going to find him and we will take him out. Uh, now, Puppy Poor might also look to take out his brother. And speaking of taking out people, hold on a minute. Wham. Over on this east side of the map, he's beginning to move, make mogul moves here on Symptom. So things starting to shape up really, really badly for these Delhi players. The question is going to be whether Symptom is able to hold on. Now, when it comes to sacred sites, let's check and see how many we've got in the game. It's going to be three, but we see that that Barbican is going to be going down towards the north side. A little bit of a pushback from here. A lot of archers coming out. Dinky King reaching the castle age as well. He's got that landmark that's up nice and safely. A couple knights going to be intercepted here. Matt is going to be spotting it. And with that, Matt is might turn his attention towards that landmark. The battering ram continues. And Wham looking to take down early pressure. But we do see Dinky's landmark does go down. It's going to be Puppy Paw that takes it out. Second landmark now getting taken out as well. 
So the non-aggression pact, you can see that it worked out here in both of these guys' favors, right? You know, you've got Dinky King, he needs to defend against Puppy Paw, and you've got Wham, he needs to, to defend against Simtop. I say defend, you know, the same way that the, the developers call towers or outposts defensive structures. Like, yeah, it's a defensive structure, guys. Yeah, <laughs> defensive. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we can see Matt is saying, what are you doing here, Dinky? Uh, and so actually calling out the position here, asking, you know, what, what the heck is going on? With that, he leaves the single landmark remaining. Uh, but the, the men at arms, we'll take a look and see whether he's... Oh, oh, oh. He's heading up d directly towards that position. Uh, so Puppy Paw may indeed know where that landmark has come up. So things now starting to stay in a great position. I mean, he's, he's managed to stabilize. He's looking really good. Sacred Sight's in the middle. We see one being taken by Puppy Paw. Second one, a little bit further along. Third one, also going to be close by. So three Sacred Sights, all in a central location. Puppy Paw, the closest one, but still open to a lot of people here. Council Hall now burning down. Men at Arms does find the, uh, the, the King's Palace towards the north, and with that, you're going to see a whole raft of Men at Arms moving up towards that position. Castle Age coming through for Matiz. He's looking good at the moment. I'm liking Matiz's position. Goes with the Guild Hall. Puts it in a bit of a strange location. But now we've got a bit of a fight breaking out towards the north. Zertan's coming back for more. He said, hey, my true canoe, they're one of the strongest units in Age 2. And Delhi has got barely anything that they can deal with it. I love this unit in Age 2 against the Delhi. I think it's one of the best things that you can make. I love playing Age 2 against Delhi just because of these bad boys. But we start to see that things are starting to heat up. State fighting for his life right now. Everyone very, very cognizant of, uh, of the fact. And we might have a player getting eliminated early. It's going to be Puppy Paw, who is taking out Dinky King. The landmark goes down, and with that, a single landmark remains. It's going to be the Council Hall that remains. Dinky King, unfortunately, going to be knocked out early once again in this game, spawning very close to Puppy Paw. And with that, Puppy Paw going to be securing a very solid point lead already in this game, guaranteeing himself six points for the kill and ten points for First Blood. A huge amount of points going over to him. He guarantees 16 points already. And he's looking very strong at this stage of the game. So I wouldn't be surprised if people start turning their eyes towards him because he looks to become a favorite now. Keep in mind, in that first game, he did actually score the most points. And already, he's looking aggressive and looking great in this second game. The push continues coming in. Zertan holding on. Looking to try and take down the main town center here for State. State... Still in age two. The question is going to be whether he can think about going up to that third age. And the answer is definitely no, sir. Re Bob, not yet. Battering Rams now going to be going down. The uh, the the spearmen going to be taking them out. Shokunu overwhelming at this point in time. The reinforcements continue coming in. So just when we thought it was looking good there for state, unfortunately, Zertan managing to find that next gear. But on the south side, we got keeps and we got trebuchets coming in onto Zertan's base. And so even though he might be able to come in and, and take the kill, the question is going to be whether it is going to be enough to keep him alive. And it becomes a bit of a race because remember, that first landmark has gone down. The second landmark, it's going to be in the base here. The third landmark, a little bit further to the north. And I don't know whether Don spotted that one out. He might have to go looking for it. We'll see how he plays it. Conversion. Going to be looking to pick up a couple of villagers from Dinky. Puppy Paw sa says, thank you very much. I'll zombify these villagers and I'm going to be keeping them for myself. Very, very cheeky from him right there. Town center still going down at the moment. A lot of spearmen. Actually, the... Those are villagers? Zertan's pulled villagers? Zertan pulls his villagers to take the kill right now? Is that what we're seeing? He's bringing forward the villagers to repair the ram as well as to take down the town center. Look, oh, 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 oh okay, I just realized. All right, uh, State is in trouble. This State could be the second player knocked out of this game here. We're going to ride on board with Matiz because he seems to be quite passive up towards that position. Over towards that eastern side, we do see that Simtom going to be losing his landmarks. Landmark number one, or number two, rather, going to be destroyed. Actually, it's this one over here. So we got a lot of landmarks going down. Landmark number two for State. Might be going down. State going to be eliminated. Six points going to be going over to Zertan as well as five or rather six or five points rather uh, for that second blood. It does go out for him. So State, unfortunately, leaving the game there. And with that, only six remain. And now we've got Symptom, who looks to defend against Wham. I assure you guys that with regard to, to this, uh, that... Oh, oh my lord, what, what is going on right here? Don Don moving across the map. I, I don't know exactly where Don's going or what Don's doing. He might, he might just be looking... Uh, he might just be looking for Zertan and his landmark, but doesn't realize it's, it's barely around the corner from him. He continues moving through the base. 
Things going to get hard. You, you know those Chinese players, they love to, to move around the map. We'll take a look on board with Zertan and see if he's got the resources to drop another landmark. Indeed he does. And he's playing the Chinese, so he might be thinking about doing it. Imperial Academy stays alive. And you remember early on in this game, we saw Zertan put down the Imperial Academy next to his town center. He canceled it. It went to 50%. He rebuilt it over here. This single decision may actually keep him in the game a lot longer than what realistically he should be in the game. But now over on this east side, Simtom going to be in a little bit of strife. Wham moving in, looking to take a life. Up towards that north side, we continue to see that push coming through. And now the question is, where does Wham go from here? He goes to Imperial. The Palace of Swabi are going to be coming down for him. He's been aggressive in this early stage of the game and now looks to convert. We see Don Artie. He's found the last landmark, the Imperial Academy. It's going to be it, but the question is going to be whether another landmark comes up. Zertan going to be having enough villagers as well as resources to be dropping down that next landmark. He needs to go and he needs to go right now. The Imperial Academy is under attack. The question is going to be whether he's going to be able to get it up. Oh my lord, that's a lot of words coming out real quickly. He might just not look not to get it up though, at all. At this point, he's, he's got enough resources there. I see a sacred site victory coming, says Zertan. The first victor, the first sacred site has been captured. The second sacred site has been captured. The third sacred site still yet to be captured, but look at Puppy Paw. He is waiting, and now 29 villagers on that north side of the map begin making the Imperial Academy as quickly, or Imperial Palace as quickly as they can. I don't think there's going to be any real race. Oh, the trebuchet! Oh, the trebuchet shot! Oh my lord, he's going to kill the landmark before he gets it up! Oh, yeah. oh my god! It was at 4990! There was literally 10 health to go and Zertan gets eliminated just before Symptom does! Or rather just after! So right there you're gonna see that 5 points extra goes over to Wham! You can see it, look at that, Zertan says, oh my god that was so close! Yeah, that was so close! That was 10 point, 10 health away! I don't know why he, why he left it for so long! So just to clarify, I had 10 HP left on Landmark. Yeah, you had 10 HP left on Landmark. You had 10 HP left. Wild, dude. Oh my god. So, okay. Uh, so Zertan was eliminated after Simtom was. So that means that the extra five points are going to be going to Wham for that kill. Don Adi just going to be picking up the usual six points there. Not going to be getting the extra points for that third, uh, that third blood. Uh, but wow. Oh, jeez. These guys are meaning business here. I tell you what, you've taken these free-for-all games and you've, you've turned them upside down with this new rule set, Drongo. I'll give you that, buddy. Wow. Things are starting to really heat up. And now I guess the question comes is, is where do we go from here? Because Don Arty towards the west side. There, there are four players that remain in this map. Uh, in, in this match, rather. Uh, we've got Don Arty over on this west side. I, I've just realized right now that I'm actually uh, watching this. I don't even... I don't have my the information up over on the side panel, so apologies to you guys. You guys can't see the score... Um, that, that information isn't displayed to you. Uh, so we, we don't actually know where... Wh why did that turn off? I don't know why that turned off. I, I don't remember turning that off. And I think we had it for the first game, didn't we? Um, yeah, we had it for the first game. Why did that turn off? Jeez, some get... Uh, I'm turning it back on. I'm, hey, I'm turning it back on. Give me a second here. Oh, oh, you know why it turned off? Because I'm watching Zertan. And Zertan's dead. Ah, there we go. <laughs> hey, all right. Don't worry. Professional streamer. We worked it out. We worked it out. So, Don Arty over on the west side, playing in, in the Rus as the purple, playing in the purple as the Rus. He's got plenty of town centers up, economy at the moment, kicking along 88 villages. He's got a pretty good position over here, away from everybody. Next play up towards the north, it's going to be Matthias. A little bit quieter than everybody else, yet to make any moves, I say, as he begins making moves. Elite men at arms from uh, from his opponent Puppy Paw here, going to be catching him off guard, but the hand cannon here is going to be looking to back this up. He's fighting out here for gold. Looking to try and control this trading post. And now Matt is in the chat saying, I'm being attacked by yellow. So just, he's providing that information. So by saying that, he's not telling people to attack yellow. He's just letting them know, hey guys, yellow is attacking me. Passing that information out. Let, let that be known. But now on that south side, Wham01 has managed to secure up a pretty decent spot. He's taken a fair amount of this map for himself. Keep in mind, Wham, still in age two which is great because it means that he can put down those landmarks with a little bit more space. He's got 62 villages though, so definitely behind the times. And this is the consequence of getting into these long protracted fights is that sure, you might get points for the kills, but at the end of the day, if you get taken out by somebody else and you give them, you know, six points and then they go on to kill another person, that's another six points, then realistically, you know, it, it could be a bad situation. But we do see the traders have now come out. It looks like not the most not the most effective trade route for Matt is. We'll ride on board with him and see how he's doing. So yeah, it's just going to be 44 gold for that one. Feels kind of bad, man. I'm not going to lie. I, I thought it would be a bit more than that. 44 gold. Meh. 
little bit of a uh, little bit of a wall here, a, a very nice natural choke point. So this is going to be great for uh, for Puppy Paw. So let let's look at Puppy Paw's perspective because he's thinking about a potential Sacred Site victory. He's on standby at the moment. Stonewall in over on this position closes this off, and now he's got a giant natural wall towards the north. Keep coming in. Where's that other Sacred Site? It's over here. So this one's still quite open. So he can look to try and take control of this choke point towards the north. Puppy Paw in a central location. A little bit dangerous for him, but he's managed to keep himself alive. He's taken out a neighbor. He's he's just really solidified this position. Uh, and now we do see some upgrades coming through for Matiz. He's going to be looking to go into that chemistry. We'll check in over with Don. He's chilling out for the moment. 25 minutes. So there might be... There was a non-aggression pact uh, down towards the south between Wham and Dinky. Dinky obviously out of the game. That non-aggression pact is gone for good. And now players grouping or, or starting to think about that next phase of the game. So what my suspicions would be is that Puppy Paw uh, might be thinking about a Sacred Site victory, as as you guys would suspect. The walls are coming up for him. And look, look at these walls, actually. These are beautiful walls he's coming up. He's looking to try and control all of these little sections here. Now, Don's going to be able to attack that position. He's already got trebuchets out, so not going to be a big deal for him. And towards the north, it's going to be tough for Puppy Paw to try and defend against this Matthias push. And remember, towards the south, even if he wants to go for that Sacred Site push, Wham is going to be down here as well. Now, in addition to that, you don't really have any infighting between these guys. One of the things that we saw in the first game between or where, where Donati was victorious with that Sacred Site victory is that there was a lot of infighting uh, between Matthias and Zerton on the south side of the map. And it basically meant that the five players that were in contention for the game basically went down to three. And so it meant only two people were challenging Don Artie. So the chances of another Sacred Site victory here I would say a slim. I definitely think that Puppy Paw is thinking about it, but I don't think it's likely. Everybody's in a very solid position. They're all independent. They're all booming at the moment. And this is all great. This is all above board. This is exactly what you would expect to see at this point in the game. But the question is who's going to be blinking first. Slowly and steadily, we see Wham taking control of the map, looking to wall off all the corners. And you can see, he might even be thinking about dropping something down here in the corner. You know exactly what that guy's like. He's traded before. He will trade again. And he will think about dropping down a wonder. But we do see him now reaching age four. Imperial Age coming through for Wham. Uh, we didn't get a notification that, that Wham reached the Imperial Age. Normally it would be like, Wham has reached the Imperial Age. But no, it did not come through. High trade house for him, 171 gold. A little bit further on, another town center. I'm going to look to try and find that landmark. It's going to be the High Armory. He's put it down in a bit of a bit of an unsafe spot. I guess it's close to everything else though, right? And realistically, I mean, you don't, you don't see a lot of... Uh, of people i mean if he gets run over it's going to be tough for him to hold on but now we've got royal culverins coming out for matthias so he's managed to secure this trading post and i think that's realistically what he wanted to do securing this trading post guarantees he's got gold income for the rest of the game yeah it's not the greatest gold i mean realistically you could even start to think dropping down an a uh oh my god there's a market out over here as well you could even start thinking about trading with that you know if, if players realize that there's a market here they can look to use that so you could have uh, Wham, as an example, a notorious trader, look to actually drop a market down here and start trading with this neutral market. If he realizes that's there, things could could very, very quickly take a turn for the worst. Uh, Wham in the chat writing, Don building wonder, team minus one. <laughs> Matt is big tower, enjoy. These guys definitely loving to have a bit of a chat, but obviously when we sit here in this sort of, this lull, this lull, uh, phase this is the, this is sort of the part that i was worried about you know you you sort of get the steam engine rolling early where where players are, uh, are just looking out and killing people but then you kind of fall off a little bit don't you because i mean realistically players are starting to think about the next phase of the game and it doesn't really come in until the wonders so when it comes to score that's going to be another consideration so people are going to be looking at score and saying okay you know well hold on there's a player here who's got quite a low score maybe we could take him out so whether whether that's Matt is that looks to do that, whether it is uh, Puppy Paul that looks to do that, whether it's Don who does a little bit of a sneaky drive-by and comes around and tries to take it. But you've got to remember here that uh, players are able to communicate that in the chat and try and take advantage of that. So, you know, we saw that towards the beginning of the game where State very clearly communicated, you know, I'm getting barbecue rushed. And so Don's like, well, okay, if you're getting barbecue rushed, I'll just go grab the points. That's easy. You know, that, that's super easy. That, that's not necessarily collusion. That, that's not necessarily defending because at the end of the day, we still saw state, we still saw state die. Oh my God, that's a tongue twister. Uh, but now we've got, now we've got ourselves a little bit of a battle. It's going to be Matiz up against Puppy Paw, a battle that we've seen before. Manganel's getting some decent shots off on that back line. Culverin doing a decent job, taking each other out. Royal Culverin going down as well. Knights moving forward, going to be able to get down on top of those hand cannoneers. And yellow hand cannoneers going to be moving back. 
trying their best to retreat. Hand cannoneers from our French player looking strong. The economy here going to be very potent. Donati moving in over on that west side. He's actually going to be creating some walls or actually stopping some walls of his own. He says, hey, I'm thinking about that sacred site and there's no chance that you're taking it. Don't even think about it. Towards that north side, we hear the battle completely un unfolding. We'll ride on board with Puppy Paw. I want to check in and see how many resources he's got at the moment. He's sitting on 144, 141 population. No villages being made at the moment, despite that Palace of Swabia. Typically, you'd expect there to be about 55 villages in queue for these Holy Roman Empire players, but not going to be the case today for Puppy Paw. A little bit of a stock take for me, personally. I know you guys can see it, but me, I can't see it. So I got to check in with these guys and see how they're doing. 104 economic units for Matias in the north. Don Artie at the moment, 152. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to these team building exercise 95 uh, team building games. Uh, Wham, going to be sitting on 119. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we've already we've already talked about everybody else. So at the moment, your lead is going to be Don Artie. Uh, so he's got the, the not the highest score, but he's definitely got the village account uh, to go for it. Now pushing forward with some outposts. We're going to gain that line of sight. Begin challenging these sacred sites when it comes to relics as well. I, I don't actually see the relics. You guys will be able to see that one. That gives a good indication on where the gold is at at the moment. But Wham, he, he's my main concern because he spots this now. If he, he, he spots this with the villagers. Now, if he puts two and two together, I would not be surprised to see markets drop down here. One market here and 44 markets up here. And he looks to then use this market. Like, it, it would be ludicrous, the amount. That, that is a... We're, we're talking a gigantic map, full market cross. This has the potential to be a 450 golder. That's what I'm calling out. Outpost looking to do a little bit of damage. More outposts firing off. It's going to be those emplacements. Matt is saying, let's do some diplomacy. He says, if I attack Wham, Wham, the, he attacks me. Okay, so they're, they're getting a little bit, not a little bit confused, but a little bit worried. You know, if I go and attack somebody else, then I'm going to get attacked from behind. And, and that's the consequence of taking these central locations. So you can see Puppy Paw here, a bit defensive uh, in the middle. Uh, but then, obviously, Don Artie going to be thinking about, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just attacking the person that's closest to me as well. So not necessarily teaming up and taking him out. Uh, Don is going to build a wonder, says Wham. Seriously. Don saying, I'm down to have fights. I'm not going for a wonder. But you and I know the secret. You and I know the truth. You, you guys know exactly what Don's doing. He says, I'm down to fight. I'm not going for a wonder. This is classic misdirection by Don. He is looking to, to prevent people from even thinking, oh, you know, I'm not going for a wonder. W asking, we can do separate 1v1s because you can see these guys looking to try and play it a little bit, you know, a little bit. Uh, I, and look, I'll be honest with you guys. This is, unfortunately, this is something that we, di we didn't want to see uh, from the rule sets. You know, we don't want people to be like trying to negotiate. We just want them to, to have fun and play the games. But the reality is when, when we do that, when we allow that, then it just results in these huge alliances happening. You know, five people, even though they didn't say they're in an alliance. And so unfortunately, we had to put those rules in place to try and stop that from happening, just to, to prevent that. Because, you know, you guys don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. I didn't, I didn't have fun yesterday. I fell asleep at about 42 minutes into the game. I'll be, I'll be real with you guys. Uh, but now it looks like the battle on the north side going to be unfolding. Don Artie saying, I need to figure out how to get to Wham first. He's going to be marching his units across the base. He looks like he's just going back and forth, but this is all misdirection. Remember that. The longer that these two guys are fighting on, this is Don playing the late game. Don knows that Wham's score is low. And so as long as... And, and Wham is across the other side of the map. So Don can easily get that wonder down and start looking to hold on to it. The longer these two fight, the longer they stay in the game, the better for the Don. But now the backside gets fired upon. All of those bombards going to be going down to the Knights. Hand Cannoneers moving forward. Sacred Sight going to be challenged here. And with that, Matt is looking pretty strong in this position. We'll ride on board with him and see how he's doing. He's got plenty of resources in the bank. A lot of units coming out. Compare that over to his opponent, Puppy Paw, who is down on military, down on population, down on villages. Only 116 villages. And with that, going to have to fall back. The outposts have got those emplacements in them, able to fire down and dish out plenty of damage. But we do see trebuchets now beginning to come out for Matiz. Matiz looking good on this north side. Don Artie just continuing to do what Don Artie does best and distract the enemy. Wham over on that other side. Do we see the walls coming up? He's got walls, but he's still yet to trade. This neutral market can be traded with. We still don't see that trade coming in for him. It would be so powerful if he, if he, if he was to put two and two together. I don't think there's any other markets that are up towards this northern side. It doesn't look like it. So, unfortunately for Don, not going to have an option there. But Trebuchet's now 
looking to take down these buildings. Going to be blasting through that uh, that outpost despite the emergency repairs on it. Bombard response now coming out from Bobby Paul. He's looking to do a bit of defense here. Matt is saying in the chat, Don attacking me. Don's not, Don's not attacking. He's just doing some gentle clearing. I'm finding a path to Wham that doesn't go through Puppy. Oh, I got bad news for you, Don. <laughs> there isn't one. There is not one at all. Unless you're going to go on the south side. But obviously, Don, he doesn't want to do that. And he knows that. He's down here. He knows that he can get around it. But uh, Wham on the other side. Wham starting to build the Great Wall of Wham. Now, one of the things I love about Wham's walls is that they're only wooden. And this is something we see Wham do a lot. He seems to roll the rust, qu the rust quite a bit here, unfortunately. But now this battle rages on towards the north. They're going to try and hold on. You just know Don's clearing out land somewhere. He actually drops down that Spaskaya Tower. I'm curious as to whether he can fit a wonder behind that. I would suspect he might be able to. It seems a very strategically placed position. He could have gone over here and looked to put it there. But look at Don. You see, you, you guys know exactly what he's doing. He's preparing. The, the, this is not a, an offensive... Uh, an offensive preparation. This is a defensive preparation. He knows that he's going to be attacked from that south side by Wham. He is beginning to prepare. And now in the center, we see Don beginning to push in on Puppy Paw towards the north. Puppy Paw is looking to fight off against Matiz. And this is the consequence of taking up that central position. Yeah, sure. You might be in the middle. You might have access to those sacred sites. You might have access to relics. You might even have access to players. But unfortunately, when it comes to the late game, you are the piggy, you are in the middle, and things start to get a little bit, a little bit heated for you as you get heated up. But now it looks like that push really coming out now. Matiz resources. Uh, we'll have to check in on them, but Puppy Paw is quite drained. Matiz actually draining heavily as well. Only 73 villagers for him. So I don't know whether I've missed a raid or three in the base of Matiz, but he's lost a lot of villagers. I'm not sure what's going on for him. What's gone wrong? I suspect there might have been a bit of a raid on the gold mine. He's got no villagers here. And with that, Matiz is going to be trying his best. But remember, this is all that misdirection strategy. Don Artie's saying, yeah, don't worry. I'm going to fight with Wham. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting with Wham. I'm looking to fight with Wham. Don't worry about me. And it's just a classic case of Don Artie with the misdirection once again. And now, look at this just chilling out for the moment. He's not looking for Wham. He doesn't care two, two bits about Wham. And he knows that if Wham wants to come kill him, he's going to have to go through Puppy Paw first. Don Artie is building a wonder. The man says it himself. I'm not going for a wonder. Two minutes later, and Wham in the chat saying, told ya. There it is. 37 minutes, Don Artie going to be pulling out that victory. And straight away, we see Puppy Paw falling back and saying, whoa, 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 whoa. All right. We've got, a, we've got a place to be, ladies and gentlemen. Puppy Paul saying, okay, stop, Matiz. Matiz saying, okay, let's stop, Puppy. Stop, go for Don. All right, all right. <laughs> they've decided. But this is what Don did, right? He, he, this is the idea behind it. Don Artie says, yeah, I'm going to fight against you, Puppy Paul, or against you, Wham. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to find a way. And then it's all about that misdirection. And now you can see him in the center here, just chilling out for the moment. Whether he actually looks to defend from this position or what he aims to achieve, I think the main thing that he's doing here is forcing uh, Puppy Paw to attack him into this position. You know, he might want to avoid an attack on this north side. So let's see how he plays it. Plenty of stables out. Absolutely no walls. He's not worried at the moment about a run by. Let's see how many keeps he actually drops down because there's not a lot of room back here. That Cathedral of the Tsar is up. Spaskaya Tower is next to it. Going to be able to provide a plenty or plentiful amount of vision but i wouldn't be surprised if we see some farms being deleted and don looking to drop down some keeps nearby but realistically there's not a lot of stone left for him he's, he's got gold here more stone in the middle and now don beginning to push forward so we could be looking to fight out and more villagers coming around the side so this is the right move what wham is doing is correct if you're playing a free-for-all if you're playing in those uh if, if you're playing you know in your own games and playing free-for-all and you're in this kind of situation the best thing that you can do is bring villagers forward the reason why is because this is a forward base here for for yourself instead of marching your units all the way across from these all all, all the way over towards don Artie, instead what you want to be doing is looking to take those villages across and begin building a forward base. But now, the spearmen on that south side going to be looking to begin sieging down these outposts from Don. Don still yet to really begin moving. He's broken through on that south side, but just chilling out for the moment. Matty's going to have to move in on the north. Each player with a clear path towards Don Artie. 
So not really going to have to fight through. And we talked a bit about it before that Wham's going to have to go through Puppy Paw. But that is not the case. You know, Wham is the kind of guy who's, who's going to be thinking outside the box. And we begin to see Siege Workshops coming down as the very first buildings that he is making. He obviously drops a keep down as well. He's going to be using that as a staging point. But you can see that Don reacting immediately and looking to try and take out this forward base before it really begins to solidify. Don still yet to upgrade his Knights to Elite. He's got Streltsy 8. Oh, Streltsy out. And you can see them coordinating. Matt is go from north. I go from center. Wham from south. That is exactly right. That is exactly what these guys are doing. And those hand cannoneers, they are looking fierce. And Don he may, he may have gone a little bit early. We'll take a look at the wonder tracker and see where it's at. 13 minutes to go for Don. He's going to be holding on for dear life as players begin to assemble. Another keep going to be coming down for Don. And the forward base, the villagers get found. And this could be terrible here for Wham. The Streltsy are going to be coming out looking to focus these down. But with that, the keep going up. We see the trebuchets on the backside able to take out this keep. And uh, aggressively, Don takes out the forward base. Villagers, he realizes he's not going to be able to do that. Puppy go f going for Sacred Win. Deny that. So you have, I didn't see what he said, but you can see that Puppy Paw is going for a Sacred Victory here. Potentially. That's what Don's doing. He's trying He's trying to do more dis misdirection. It is a possibility that he could do that. Or it's a possibility that he could go for the Sacred Sight victory. But uh, you can see Don just chasing around these bombards. Doing the right thing. Killing the siege. But with that, the trebuchets looking to focus down these siege workshops. And with that, going to be heading back to the drawing board. Don being super smart with this. Some stables down here for Puppy Paw as well. Bombard's going to be coming out towards that north side. We'll check in and see how the push is coming. There's a lot of production up here towards the north. Don Arty. He's got plenty of resources in the bank. Keep in mind, I don't think he's got that upgrade yet for his knights. We'll check in on one of his stables and see how he's doing. So despite being a high quality player, he's made a big mistake right here. And now that push looking good on that north side. We'll check in with the Wonder Tracker. 11 minutes, 37 seconds to go for Don Arty. It looks tough for him to hold as... Puppy Paw continues pushing through on this north side. So one of the... Old, Puppy Paw's got two ways he can play this. As he moves the Prelate away from the Sacred Site, he moves it a bit further away. So the first way that he, that he can play it is he can undercut Don Arty. So that would mean trying to make it so that he takes the Sacred Site and he allows himself just one second before the Wonder. The second option is he does it the other way and leaves it so that it's a second after the wonder. That way, he remains still in, in contention or the wonder still remains in contention and people are still looking at him as the big threat. Wham saying, delete your wonder. You can see how serious Wham is about this. Delete your wonder or you will die. It's that kind of thing. But now the Bombard's rolling forward. Wham able to establish his, his beachhead down towards his south side. A lot of production down here. Still yet to see any traders up towards this north side. Unfortunately, Wham is not trading. Not in this game, fellas. Not in this game. Huge amount of forces up here for Matias as well. He's continuing to round the circuits. Round the corner. There's still quite a way to go towards this position. You can see Don Arty with plenty of production on the backside. So many damn production buildings. He's sitting on 191 population at the moment. A lot of those still economic units. He's looking to drop down walls and try and delay, distract, deny, and prevent anything from happening. But remember, when it comes to the wonder, you've also got to consider landmarks as well. We've got the Spaskaya Tower here, which is probably going to be the hardest thing to take out. It's got 10,400 health, and that is a lot of health. The push continues coming in. I don't know where Don's military is right now. But it's going to be trebuchets. He's looking to just take out production instead. Village is easily going to be able to move forward here and take that out. Don may have gone a little bit too early on this one. Nine minutes and 47 to go. We don't see any sacred site being taken at the moment by Puppy Paw. There is the possibility that he goes for it now that it's after that 9 or 9.59 mark. But Don Arty going to be losing his monastery. No tithe barns for him either. I don't know how long he's been sitting on that. But the five relics do go down. And now Don going to be trying to hold on. You can see he's still moving forward. These pushes coming through. A lot of bombards on the south side. Don here with the Streltsy. We still don't see a lot of... We don't see any knights actually coming out for him. Still no... Oh, he's just going horsemen. He's just going to go horsemen. So uh, I don't know whether it's Streltsy and horsemen is the play for him. It looks like it's going to be the play here. So instead of going knights, he's just going to be going horsemen. High trade house is going to be going down. So that's a second landmark now being destroyed from Don. Third landmark. It's down here. It's this town center. They might not even go for the, the Wonder. They might just take out the Spaskaya Tower instead. And that might be Don Arty that has to be tapped out of the game. But now continuing to move forward. Don Arty definitely on a timer. Eight minutes to go. 
It might not seem like a lot, but he's got plenty of resources in the bank still. He's going to be able to continue reinforcing. He's got keeps towards the north side. Not a lot of outposts, but remember as the Rus, ideally you don't want to make a lot of outposts because you can't get those emplacements, the cannon emplacements that are going to be so important. And up towards the north. Matiz continues pushing through. It looks like he's run into Puppy Paw, so they may come across a little bit of friendly fire as this nice little defensive lake prevents them from finding their own ways through in separate choke points. On the south side, Wham. He is not trading. He is pushing. Wham is pushing. Don, unfortunately, not, not doing a, a decent job of collecting or, or having a cohesive push, but now going to be coming through. You can see the horsemen. And ideally, right now, Don just wants to be focusing down the Bombards. That's the big, the big draw here for him is those Bombards. He needs to focus them down. You can see him looking to try and fight off. Does he not have... He's not got Boyer's Fortitude, does he? Oh, no, he doesn't have Knight Sabres. I think he's got Boyer's Fortitude. Actually, I don't think he does. Hold on, no. Uh, never mind. I don't think he's got Biology. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what upgrades he's got. But now Don holding with Streltsy on the north side. Horseman on the south side. He's preventing the push. Puppy Paw even typing in the, in the chat. Streltsy, good unit. Streltsy, good unit indeed. No Mangonels out here at all. Streltsy going to be looking to hold on. Don Artie going to be looking to blister out all the forces. He falls back into the choke point. Let's see if he turns around or whether he continues retreating back towards those reinforcements. Streltsy looking decent as they continue holding on. Taking out night for night for night, baby. And now those Bombards looking even stronger as they continue solidifying. But the Streltsy coming out in number here. He might be pushing up. Might be looking to take out some more names. And Don looking good as he holds on in these choke points. A beautiful little way that he's played it here. Securing the Spaskaya Tower on that northern side. Or rather, yeah, on, on the northern side of, of the Wonder. We see more reinforcements coming out for him. We'll check on board and see how long we've got. Seven minutes to go. It seems like eternity for Don. But the question is going to be whether he can hold it. It's not too long before those forces will be making their way to the Cathedral of the Tsar. He's starting to bleed a fair bit of resources now. Down to less than 5,000 wood. Down to less than 6,000 gold. But he still holds on at this point. 59 villages remain for Don. Plenty more units in queue. He's hoping to get more of them out. He's just pumping non-stop at this point. Springle's coming out as well. Going to be taking out the Siege. You can see the Knights moving towards position. A lot of uh, elite horsemen here. He's fighting on the 2v1 front. Looking to try and take it out. Springle's going to get a good shot off on that battering ram. Managing to hold the masses here of Siege. Looking good on that north side. But at the same time, on the south side, Push is coming to shove here. Wham is looking to try and take out Don. On this flank, in a bit of an interesting maneuver, Don going to have to be sending all of his reinforcements to here, but while at the same time fighting on the north side, looking to try and take it 1v1 initially. Ideally, I mean, if you've ever been involved in a street fight, you'll know that the, the theory behind street fighting is that you want to minimize the enemies as much as possible, try and fight away from each other. If, there's a, if it's a 2v1, you want to try and, you know, maneuver your way so that it's only a 1v1. And Don does that, but unfortunately gets overwhelmed. So many hand cannoneers in here. Not enough mangonels from the Don at this point, but 51 Streltsy in queue. It looks like a last ditch effort from Don. He's got 1,060 bounty, but that ain't going to be helping him out right now, fighting up against those Streltsy. Doing his best. But unfortunately, it looks like things are wa winding to a crawl here. Or ending ending to a crawl. Keep in mind that central sacred site still not taken up. But look what we've got here. Puppy Paw is indeed intent on taking this sacred site. But interestingly, has yet to take it. Now, what is the reason why he's doing this? You guys will remember back to the very first game of the Outback Octagon. Where Beastie on the Chinese made a wonder before his enemy's wonder was destroyed. And that distracted his enemies and forced them to come back and actually kill Beastie because they thought the initial wonder was dead. And Puppy Paul wants to guarantee that there is no way, no way at all that Don Artie is victorious here. So he doesn't look to take that sacred site. But Don continues putting on the reinforcements. The number's looking good on the south side here. He's managed to clean up a fair amount of the forces up on the north side. But unfortunately, the siege keeps rolling in. Wham saying in the chat his entire army is near me and indeed it does look like that is the case as he gets forced back here looking to try and take out that siege that's going to be the important the key ingredient in this push is going to be that siege he takes out a bombard second bombard manages to stay alive two bombards on that south side are okay Don continues holding he continues fighting four minutes to go Don looking a little bit better but at the same time I don't think it's going to be enough he's starting to bleed out resources less than 500 food in the bank for him now less than 500 gold as well things starting to trickle out and barely oh no the units now the things are not looking good he drops down a market he's going to be looking to sell out a bit of his wood there i suspect he's holding on but he may have peaked a little bit too early we're almost there you can see puppy Paw saying we're almost there but now push is coming in on the south side and unfortunately for don 
It looks like it may have been just a few minutes too early for him. Things not looking pretty, but I don't I don't think there's any chance this Cathedral of the Sar stays up. He looks to come through. You can see him moving towards that siege. He wants to take out the trebuchets. Streltz are going to be going up against each other, but now the horsemen and the knights moving together in tandem going to be working towards that Cathedral of the Sar. The Spaskaya Tower going to be burning down all of those, those resources. And then the players are now just focusing down the Spaskaya Tower. You can see the trebuchets just looking to focus it down. They're going to be looking to knock Don out right now. We'll ride on board with Poppypaw because Don, it looks like he might be tapping out here. They're not even going for the wonder. You can keep the wonder, Don. Keep the change, my friend. You are going to be sent to the Shadow Realm. And with that, six points going to be handed over to three players all working to take out Don Adi. And good game gets called. Don Adi going to be going down, and I suspect, we'll double check with the admins, but I suspect you are going to see uh, all of those points for Don Adi awarded equally to each of these players here. Don Adi uh, being on, or Don Adi worth six points, so two players going to Puppy Poor, two points, sorry, two points to Puppy Poor, two points to Matiz, two points to Wham, is how you would expect it to go down. But we already begin to see the next phase of the game beginning to brew, as that sacred site in the middle is now under threat. Puppy Paw has taken control of all three sacred sites. One hour and one minute. Ladies and gentlemen, write it down because Puppy Paw is now looking to begin the next phase of the game. Clearing out the siege here on this western side of the map towards the north. We can see a bit of a battle unfolding as well. And the question is, where does Wham go from here? All right, so we've got confirmation from the admin that Matt has sniped two landmarks, didn't attack the last. The Twins took over the last landmark, so two points for everybody has been confirmed at this point. So everybody putting in the effort there to take down Don Adi. A valiant effort for Don, but unfortunately peaking a little bit too early there. A beautiful try from him, but unfortunately not going to be successful. Not in this game, Don. <laughs> you can't fool me once, Don. Shame on me. Fool me twice, and also shame on me, I think is how that one goes. But now... Now the question is going to be whether Matt is and whether Wham are going to be able to work together to take down Puppy Paw. Let's, let's do an inspection of each of these sacred sites. Get an idea of exactly what is being held upon them. So, the first sacred site. It looks pretty well fortified. A lot of culverin in here, ready to defend. Second sacred site, a little bit further down. And the, keep in mind, this one's very well protected. A natural choke point in here enables, enables almost no defense required for this second sacred site. And the third sacred site, a little bit further on. Well, there's not too much here, but realistically, there's not real, really much of a threat, I say, until I see Wham. And Wham looks intent on taking down Puppy Paw from this south side. Or rather, this west side, I should say. Puppy Paw definitely holding on for dear life. Now, the other question becomes landmark snipes as an option. We see one landmark, the Burgrave Palace. Second landmark, the Town Center. Third landmark, it's going to be the Arkan Chapel. Fourth landmark, it's that Palace of Swabia. All of these, barely a defensive structure in sight for them. Do the players put two and two together? Do they say, well, hold on a minute. The sacred sites, yeah, they're, they're like the tortoise shell. You know, they're, they're hard. It's difficult to bite into that. But as soon as you get underneath that, mm, that's the juicy side, baby. That's where all the good stuff is. Players could start thinking about that. So we'll watch to wait and see how they play it out. Matt is on the north side. We'll check in and see how he's doing on that resource count. Starting to climb now. 72 villages for him. Starting to make trebuchets. Also getting in that geometry upgrade. Looking to improve the damage that's coming out there and try and start eating through the defensive structures. Now, keep in mind, Puppy Paw on the defensive has also got uh, access to that all-important uh, emergency repairs. That is going to enable him to have a significant, a significant amount of uh, extra resources in this late game because it means that Instead of spending wood on on uh, on unit or rather on uh, on repairing, he can spend the wood on units. But now more, plenty of units coming out for him. Trebuchet is unfolding. Remember our timer. We're at one minute and one uh, yeah one hour and one minute. One oh gosh one hour and one minute. But look at Wham Wham just coming through with absolute brute force down here. Trebuchet's nowhere to be seen. There's just bombards here, baby. That is all he needs. But the culverin gonna be able to hold on. Hand Cannon is going to be out matching the Streltsy, at least for the moment, as they push them back even further. Cannon emplacements. We can hear the, just the sounds, the beautiful sounds of the artillery shells landing and taking out the uh, the enemy units, but a keep going to be dropped down here. It doesn't look like there's any bombard, so not going to be easily able to deny this keep. Plenty of units on this south side. Are you going to be able to reinforce this position? 
He's got a few more production buildings up towards the north, but nothing really on these sacred sites. So all of that sake, all, all of those, all of that, that production, he's got plenty of units in here. And honestly, you'd be tempted to say, oh gosh, never mind. That's a big force coming down upon him. Trebuchet is sounding beautiful as well as they fire down. Emergency repairs is up for him, but this is the consequence of not going for Elsbach Palace. So taking that Palace of Swabia means that you are going to be having that that full damage on your buildings here rather than the Elsbach Palace. We did see the Elsbach come out in the first game. Simtom looked to secure it, but unfortunately not going to be coming out in this second game. The Rus Springwood is going to be getting that little bit of extra range over the Culverin. You can see the Micro coming out from Wham as he tries to move his units back accidentally targeting a Lumber Camp. Streltsy going to be working together uh, with those Springles and managing to take out a Culverin. So two Sacred Sites being held at the moment for Puppy Paw under threat. And so now Puppy Paw definitely looking like he might be in a tough position. Look at the Culverin numbers coming out here as well for Matiz. Matiz looking solid on this north side. Keep in mind, Matiz, I think he was sitting on about 70 villages. Yeah, 74 villages. So all of the rest of those units uh, are just going to be very effective military population units. But now a little bit of a push coming out. Puppy Paw going to be jumping out of the base, heading into the defensive structures is here. He knows that he needs to take out these trebs, but at the same time, there's so many of them, and there's a lot of product protection here. Slowly but steadily, Matiz is working down the defense here. But Puppy Paw might be looking like he's on his last doggy legs. South side of the map. We see that a lot of the units for Puppy Paw have come down towards this position. He knows how important it is to clear this out, but now we can see the consequence of allowing his brother, Wham, to set up shop down here is that it's also made a proximity base or a proxy base very, very close to him. And now the score lead has been overtaken. Wham, all of a sudden, the man infamous for trading has taken the score lead. We'll ride on board with him and see how he's doing. Not a lot of resources in the bank, only 91 villagers. But you can see that the attrition in this game is so significant. No one moving towards that 100k gold limit that we've seen reached multiple times. I remember Beastie reaching it. I think Simtom reached it as well. And Puppy Paw typing in the chat. Yeah, I knew this was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Puppy. It looks like it might be a bit of a bad idea. So Puppy definitely going to be in a bit of strife here. We'll ride on board with him and see how he's doing. 151 population. Absolutely bleeding units right now. Things not looking good for him. And now the question is whether Puppy Paw continues to be killed by one of these two guys. He's stuck in the center, and we talked about this in the beginning. The consequence of taking this central location is, well, you sort of open yourself up to these double-pronged attack, and that doesn't necessarily mean that the two players are teaming up. That just means that you're in the middle, mate. That doesn't... That's that's not necessarily... You know, that, 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 ain't, that ain't breaking the rules. That's perfectly fine. So, Puppy Paw, unfortunately, beginning to lose this sacred site. We can see he holds on for a little bit longer. And now those emplacements are going to be firing off. Managing to hold on towards the north side. The trebuchets continue moving forward. They've left their run pretty well timed here. And so now we do see that the wonder victory not going to be the case here. We did see a wonder built here from Donati, but not going to be the case. And now the sacred site victory also looking like it might be denied here as the culverin move forward. There's a fair amount of units up here. 31 or 34 rather for Puppy Paul, but I don't think it's going to be enough to hold that. And with that, we see him cleaned up on the south side. Puppy Paw equally losing units. And Matiz is pushing me with CG types into the chat. He hasn't spent anything. Puppy Paw trying to do a little bit of misdirection, saying, hey, Swam, don't you dare attack me. Uh, don't you dare attack me. But now up towards the north, we see three minutes until Sacred Victory. It is, it is coming out. It is happening. Puppy Paw looking to try and defend here. Puppy Paw surrenders. He surrenders in the middle of the map. He says, I, I know I've got no chance. And he surrenders. And with that, I would suspect that we would once again see points split, being split between Wham and Matiz. And then there were two. So three points going over to Matiz. Three points going over to Wham. These guys working together to take down the Titan in the center. And for anybody wondering, I mean, you can just see that Puppy Paw was absolutely bled out when it, when it came to his resources remaining. He had nothing left. They would have just rolled over the top of him. And we can see now Matiz running through the base here. Might potentially be looking for a good little walla lol that he can find. Maybe even looking for a relic or two that he can pick up. And it looks like the trebuchets... I'm not sure if Matiz realizes just yet that uh, that, the, that uh, Puppy Paw has tapped out. But now there are only two that remain, Matiz and Wham. So the question is, where are the landmarks that remain for these two guys? So we've got a College of Artillery next to the Guildhall. 
which is next to the School of Cavalry, which is next to the Town Center. So all four landmarks on the same screen. One, two, three, four. So Matiz or immediately opens himself up for a potential snipe. There is no stone walls coming through as well. And now when we look at Wham on the south side of the map, or yeah, I guess you could call it the south side of the map, we see that this town center, as well as the Golden Gate, remain in this central position a little bit further on. We've got the High Trade House, and then up towards that northern position. Where is she? I know she's around here somewhere. There she is. The High Armory. So four landmarks for him. Not really open to a snipe. It's a little bit harder, but you can see him moving back towards his base at this point. So players just heading back to the drawing board, trying to work out exactly what they need to do. We hear relics getting picked up somewhere uh, in the middle of the map, as well as sacred sites uh, were being picked up as well. So I don't know what the intent is there, as they're still yet to be neutralized, or this one's still yet to be neutralized, but now Matt is going to be turning his attention towards Wham. And, uh, and things about to get heavy, I suspect. We're an hour into this game, two players remain. And with that, the potential chance to pull out. Now, you, you, you got to think about it from their perspective, right? Not only do you get six points for killing an enemy player or forcing their surrender, but you also get that 10 points for victory compared to just the seven points for second place. So it's... <laughs> Where I'm asking for friends. Uh, now, hold on. I don't know if you guys can see that. L let me just double check. I might have to fix this one up. Apologies, guys. Uh, let me just... Uh... Apologies. You guys wouldn't have even been able to see that. Uh, we'll fix that one up for you so that you can. Actually, I'm, I'm just going to make it a little bit ugly. Apologies. <laughs> and Don Hardy in the chat saying, move this shit along, noob. So now you guys can see the chat. Apologies if you couldn't see it a bit earlier. Uh, so that, that'll give us a bit more of an idea of what these guys are saying to each other. Uh... I, I don't know exactly how long that that was like that. I guess since Don Adi got knocked out. So you guys you guys are probably screaming saying, I can't, we can't see the chat, Drongo. We can't see the chat. I couldn't see you guys. I'm sorry. I've, I've got Don Adi's stream open. Uh, Wham is building a wonder. Cathedral of the Tsar, second wonder going down in this game. And with that, Wham says, all right, Matthias, bring it. You could see that they he did just ask for friends. Obviously not going to be the case, but... Wham spending 24,000 resources on this wonder, looking to try and secure victory. Now, this is going to be the long game. You know, that's 15 minutes. And one of the interesting things about this is it's almost a little bit of a distraction. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Wham, you know, intentionally give away this wonder, almost a bit like a rook here in chess. He gives away the rook, and then subsequently, checkmate comes in behind. One, two, three, four. Now, there's a good chance with Wham spawning so close to Matthias that he knows exactly where those landmarks are. And there's not a lot protecting them. There's no stone walls. There's no keeps. I, I say there's no keeps. There's a keep right here, but, you know, it's it's barely protecting these landmarks. So perhaps we see... Perhaps we see Matiz fall for it. Perhaps there's a little bit of a bait and switch. We'll have to wait and see. Because at the moment, Wham, he's moving across forces into the middle of the map. It's going to be a little bit hard for us to discern exactly where players are. Just simply because they are orange and red. These two these two colors on the maps. Difficult to see. And oh, oh, Matt is thinking outside the box a little bit now. Going to be dropping down a keep. Going to be undercutting that position and saying, well, you want to go for a wonder? That's fine. I'll go for a sacred site victory. And I'll see you. I'll see you a little bit early. 14 minutes on the wonder. Remember, it only takes 10 minutes for that Sacred Site victory to come in. And look, you can see Wham already in preparation. He might even be heading towards the base. He might have an idea here. Let's ride on board with Wham and see exactly what he's got. He's got 123 villages at the moment, 77 military population, and barely any resources in the bank. So a lot of those resources that he spent were down there on that Cathedral of the Tsar. But that could be the distraction. We'll have to wait and see how he plays it. A lot of forces beginning to build up for Matiz on that South Sacred Site. Northern Sacred Site still yet to be defended too much, but we do see the the, uh, the Monk is moving out towards it. Second Monk has captured the Sacred Site in the middle, and R Reboldaquin is out. Randy has made it to the front line. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. It is Randy. He is here, and he is queer, but that's all right. That's the way we like him. Randy is going to be looking to take some names today, I suspect. Beautiful little delay coming in. Remember, he wants to make sure that this sacred site doesn't get taken before that 10-minute mark. 
He wants to deny it being captured at all. But if worse comes to worst, as long as he can get it, make sure it's not taken before that 10 minute mark, he's going to be okay. Cleans up these these horsemen. Now, there was a second, uh, a, a second uh, scholar, not a scholar, a second monk around. And there it is moving out towards that sacred site once again. Bombard's moving through. A little bit of a front coming in for Wham. Play is finally finding their feet in the middle of the map. No one really intent on doing any drive-bys at this point in the game. I look up here with glee, hoping that one day see it. But it looks like Wham, if there's anybody who's a straight shooter, it's Wham. No chance of seeing Randy's coming out of him. That is for sure. Because he can't make them. But the Rebaldequin... Rebaldequin remains. He sits alive. That sacred site captured. You know that he's going in. He's ju he just wants to snipe that single monk, but he's getting body blocked beautifully. The horseman makes its way out. He's going to be getting the, the, the charge out. Lands it on the monk. Stops the sacred site being captured. Is immediately taken out. And you can see how intent... Oh, no, no, not the monk. The monk gets taken out. The monk gets taken out. He could have moved it to the back, but unfortunately it gets taken out. The wonder track is on 12 minutes. It's going to give him two minutes to get another monk down here. Oh, never mind. He's got another monk down here. He's going to be fine. He's going to be fine, he says, Copium. But the Springles and the Bombard's going to be moving up for it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You can see how intent they are. The Sacred Side looks like it's going to get captured. The body block comes through. And with that, Matiz is approaching Sacred Side victory. He's managed to undercut him with beautiful timing there. Unfortunately for Wham, not going to be able to pull that one out. And so at this point in the game, Wham is now undercut. It's going to be 10 minutes. So about one minute, one hour and 16 minutes uh, until that uh, until that sacred victory comes in. Whereas the wonder tractor, the wonder, the wonder tractor, the wonder tracker indicates 11 minutes to go, which means that he is undercut. Wham will not win with that wonder unless he neutralizes the sacred sites. Beautiful play from Matiz. Very smart moves from him here. Randy moving forward. Randy moving forward. I see it. I love it. I like the way it's looking. But more, more and more buildings getting taken down. Wham going to have to start thinking about... Oh, geez, that's not looking pretty, is it? The resources here for Wham, 186 population. Compare that over to Matiz. Matiz with 60,000 resources in the bank. He was a little bit of a runaway player up towards the north here, playing as the French. He was very fortunate in that he spawned next to nobody and didn't really have to attack anybody. Now, the consequence of that is that he didn't get points for killing people. Uh, but uh, obviously, for this late game position, the chance of a sacred site victory... It means that things are going well for him at this point. Randy, the Reboldequin. I don't see him. Randy, are you there? Randy's there. Let's see if we can find him. Randy, where are you? There he is, riding along with Randy. We believe, Randy. Go, Randy. Get him, Randy. Unleash your fury, Randy. Show them what you're made of. Get him, Randy! <laughs> Take him down, down, Randy! Look at him go! Just absolutely cleaning house. There is no way that Wham wins this at all. Randy too strong. Randy too bold. Randy too beautiful. Look at him go, ladies and gentlemen. You are not stopping Randy. Not on a night like this. He is in absolute tatters right now, Wham is. Things not looking good for him. Now, remember when it comes to winning this game, there are other ways for Wham to do it. He can look at that potential landmark snipe. It's always going to be an option for him to go for it. He's got one, two, three, four landmarks all very close together. Now, we don't know whether he scouted that. Let's, we can ride on board with Wham. I'm going to change into his perspective. <gasps> he hasn't scouted the landmarks. He doesn't know. He never scouted over into this direction, so he doesn't know where the town center is, nor where the, the School of Cavalry. So that's going to disincentivize him from doing that. In, in fact, it's, it's not going to even be an option there for Wham to do that. You know, typically you would think about that as a potential option, but unfortunately he doesn't know where the landmarks are if we look from his perspective as well. There's no scouts moving out in that direction. So he's not going to be thinking about that at all. He's only focused on taking down these sacred sites and it's going to be so hard for him. The first sacred site on the south side, very easily kept alive by this, this keep. Plenty of outposts in the middle. We can see these guys have got their emplacements on them as well. And then, of course, the third and final sacred site. It's got plenty of forces here to protect it. It looks like Matiz is going to be able to hold on for this one. Remember, sacred victory, I think it's coming through at what? One minute, what, uh, 116? I'm not 100% sure. Actually, you know what? I can do the wonder track and minus one. Yeah, so 116, I think it's going to be. And so with that... Matt is cleaning up Wham once again, and Wham, look at the resources in the bank. Things not looking pretty for him. Starting to get worrisome for Wham. 
Perhaps if he'd done a little bit of trading this game, things may not have gone this way. But Randy, once again, out on the map, begins to open fire upon a mining camp. And it is a mining camp of whams as well. Get out of here, mining camp. And Randy takes it down. Wendy looking strong. R Randy looking beautiful. And I've just got no idea at this point how Wham is able to hold this. You can see Spearman and Knights being made. A little bit of an attack back towards it. You can see there was an attempt made at the sacred site, but the game gets called! And with that, Matters is your victor. Good game gets called. Wham01 is eliminated. He good, he good games. He throws in the towel. And Matters even asking, where are you even? He had no clue towards the end of that game. There you guys have it. Let's take a look and see exactly what we had there at the end with regard to the military kills. Wham actually with the lead, 821. Matches on 796. Poppy Paw coming in a hot second or third place rather with 721. Good game. Well played. A lot of action that game. And uh, and if you're watching this on what on YouTube, well, we're about to have a, a, a little score update for you that'll be coming in right now. Okay, YouTube, this is your roundup for game two and the scoring for it. So in that game, uh, we saw Puppy Paw take out first blood. He was able to kill Dinky King very early on, and that secured him a, a lot of points. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, we saw very quick kills for Wham, as well as for Zertan, which guaranteed that they also got second and third blood and picked up plenty of points there. In the end, the win went over to Matthias. So he gets the 10 points uh, with seven points going to Wham. Uh, because he managed to make it to second. In the end, 24 points. Managed to go over to Puppy Paw. Once again, doing very, very solid work here. Uh, 23 points uh, to Wham, his brother. And then 15, 15, 11, 3, 2, 1. So, where does that leave us as we enter into Game 3 of the Grand Finals? Well, that leaves us with Puppy Paw in quite a large lead. 42 points for Puppy Paw at this stage. Heading into the third game. With that... It also means that 30 points are on Matthias, 29 points on Wham, 28 points on Zerton, 26 points on Don Adi. And from there, a bit of a steep drop off towards Simtom. And then from there, off a cliff, down towards Dinky and State. Three and four points each for both of those guys. That is your roundup, YouTube. I hope you guys have enjoyed this game. And we move on to game number three. Let's get to it.